America smashed this place with big bombs, more than two million tons in the time of the Vietnam War, which is more than what was dropped by all of the Allies together during the, the whole of the Second World War. So Laos has a, a huge, large bomb problem, and they, they lose a lot of people every year. Since the war ended, in excess of 12,000 people have been killed or injured by bombs or other remnants of war. 30% of these items didn't explode and remain live today. But in many areas, it's near impossible to farm. People blow themselves up whilst cultivating the land. Uh, this has kept people poor, and you know the, the new cash crop now, I suppose, is scrap metal. It's an industry or a way they can make money where there probably isn't any other occupation out in the rural areas. It's either hunt for metal to sell or um, hunt for your food in the jungle. Well, in a way, it's like everybody wants to harvest the bombs, us to destroy them and the scrap collectors to sell them. So I have to try and get to the bombs before the local people can. But because of the sheer amount of bombs, we just don't have enough trained people to get them out. It's a deadly race against time. So, mate, it was one of the kids from the school that were killed here? Yep. So, mate, he's here. 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 He's Um, I'm pretty sure it's a 904 fuse, Lynn, but I couldn't get a good look at the very front of the fuse um, to see what state it's in. So, you know, if you did try and move it, you might be putting just enough force on it to drive it back into the detonator and the whole thing will go bang. All oh, right. Can we ask who dug this, mate? Nobody's going to get in trouble. Never <laughs> Screw off. <laughs> what? What's he saying? <laughs> Yeah. Don't, uh, don't do that, mate. Don't do that. You'll get yourself killed. And look, look at all the kids around here and the houses. If, if you do that, mate, you, you might be lucky. You might get away with it for, for nine bombs. It's that last one that's the yeah. bitch. If you don't know what you're playing with and you try and move it, no, it's not real funny. You'll probably buddy, get killed. The utter destruction of Laos is unbelievable. Whatever moved was bombed. There is no way that a plane that could distinguish whether it was a truck, whether it was a man on a bicycle, whether it was a man out plowing his fields, or the currents in a river. There are bomb craters upon bomb craters upon bomb craters upon bomb craters. It was the first war, really, where most of the fighting was conducted by bombardment. So the Lao people didn't really even see their enemy. All they saw was a plane traveling very fast, um, or bombs just impacting on the ground and going off. This place is the most heavily bombed country on the face of the planet.
it's just far too dangerous to get in there now to try and work out what type of fuse and, and what state that fuse is in. Oh, right. That big bomb course will be finished pretty soon. Yep. And then the province will have its own big bomb team to go around and get rid of things just like this. So this one is going to have to stay here until the big bomb team come back. We just need to try and make sure the head man speaks to the parents around here and tells them to, to keep control of their kids. It's hard to leave a bomb behind, uh, especially near the school, but um, unfortunately to do a bomb like that, we need a, a whole team. And there's a real shortage of big bomb teams in Laos at the moment. I'm an EOD technician, uh, which is an explosive ordnance disposal technician. Uh, I've been in Laos now for four years, working with MAG, an international aid organisation, and I've been asked to help teach a course at the National Training Centre. All the bombs that were dropped on Laos through the war you know, are just a continuing problem. Now, 30, 40 years after the fact, we've got a new generation of young Laos who weren't even around during the war that have to be trained to deal with this stuff so that the generations in the future won't have to deal with it as they do. Basically, the big bomb project is for us to train teams from each province uh, that can go back and deal solely with large aircraft bombs. I was lucky enough to learn my skills uh, as an engineer in the Australian Army, but these guys are pretty much thrown in the deep end. Some go from high school to junior positions in UXO Lao, which is the Lao government's uh, bomb disposal department, and they are learning very quickly to become big bomb team leaders. <laughs> Miss Chanavon was one of the successful students of the last course. Now she's Lao's only female senior EOD technician. <laughs> เราฟังเกี่ยวกับตัวนี้มันหนาสนใจถามว่าเฮาซอยเข้าไหร่นะอันทุกๆลูกระเบิดเหมือนเฮาจะขึ้นมาเฮาจะมีสามวิธีเห
Nobody's going to be in the danger area. And it's, uh, it's important to me to have a good interpreter like Lynn. Uh, a miscommunication in this line of work could be fatal. In bomb disposal, we try to keep things as calm as possible. Lynn's time as a monk helps him temper what I say sometimes when I'm a little bit frustrated. He's a bit of a calming influence and I'd be absolutely lost without him. Lynn was a monk for six years and Mike's interpreter, Ponsai, or, or Bob as we call him, was, uh, was a monk for 13 years. When they first came out of the monkhood, they really made up for lost time. <laughs> and poor old Bob is still doing it. Mẹ <laughs> phong I I know bet I'll be a you want to stronger, you can put half of the glass with Lao Lao to make this. And make a cocktail. Oh, cocktail. You know, make everything working well on the parts of your body. Especially your imagination, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there certainly will be some challenges when we go down to Toi. We've got 69 bombs to get rid of in approximately four weeks. I suppose the worst case scenario is somebody gets killed. It's not an exact science. That's one of the risks that you take on board. That's the job that we do. These guys will be out of their comfort zone very soon, mostly because the area is so remote. The fact that we've got minority populations and we've got people down there in Toi that don't speak the normal Lao dialect, there's going to be quite a few challenges. Some magic spirit, you know? Into oil. Into oil. Yeah, I, I don't know if we need to worry too much about black magic. I'm not, I'm not worried, but the best thing when we get there, we have to go to see the chief of the village. Don't have to be arrogant. Just don't go to uh, disturb or make something sad for the people in the village. Mm. We just stay in our camp after work. I wouldn't worry about it too much, killer. <laughs> Stick some garlic in your pocket, mate. They said for a person who always clean their body, it's not wrong with uh, the bathing soap. I think so. Mm. The, the spirits are scared of soap. Yeah. If <laughs> <laughs> you do it. <laughs> I'm a Central Coast boy. Grew up on the Central Coast of New South Wales. Oh, well, Mum and Dad have been up there since they married. Um, and I've got two brothers, one older, Heath, who's a bomb disposal technician. Um, and I've got a, a younger brother, Gavin, who's also a bomb disposal technician. Um, I don't know how that happened. I mean, my dad wasn't even in the army. You know, I suppose that gives Mum and Dad a bit to worry about now and again. But I'll tell you what, if somebody had told me back then that I'd be pulling bombs apart for a living, then you know, I think I'd have laughed at them for sure. The reason we picked Sa'oi to do the practical phase of the course is that it's a place where the Ho Chi Minh Trail crossed into Vietnam. It's very, very close to the Vietnamese border and would have received a lot of special attention. It's absolutely littered with bombs. Lao was pretty much dragged into the Vietnam War. What the Americans were really worried about was the domino effect. Different countries in Southeast Asia fall into communism. Communism was the big evil of the day, and we've all learnt now that you know, that's just not the case. The security of all Southeast Asia will be endangered if Laos loses its neutral independence. I want to make it clear to the American people and to all the world that all we want in Laos is peace, not war.
The Ho Chi Minh Trail down here was bombed extremely heavily. The North Vietnamese had a major supply thoroughfare through Laos from north to south Vietnam. This was a, a problem for the Americans. They wanted to cut off the supply line. And to do that, they embarked on a huge bombing campaign in Laos. The air war here in Laos was termed to be the war over the fence. So the war here was really run in secret. Pretty much no information of it was getting back to the public in the West for a good six years. There were rules of engagement in Vietnam that dictated how bombing could be conducted. Uh, for example, they weren't allowed to bomb any closer than half a kilometre away from a temple. But once they came over the fence into the secret war in Laos, they had free hand to bomb wherever they want. People of the United States, this uh, are entitled to know uh, everything that uh, they possibly can with regard to any involvement of the United States abroad. Uh, as you know, in answer to a question I think Mr. Potter asked at the last news conference, I pointed out what were the facts. There are no American combat troops in, in Laos. Laos was bombed for nine years. And you can imagine being out here when the bombing was on. You know, that sort of thing just would stay with you forever. สบายดีไอ้เลยครับใจเลยโอ้มบ่เจ้าไล่เบิ้งชามลานป้ายมันก็ชําเร็จแล้วเพจประจําเมืองเจ้าไล่เบิ้งชามลานป้ายมันก็
So the headman, he invites us there to show respect to the culture. So, Okay, that's a bit more than what I was hoping for. <laughs> well, it's not working with Big Bob anymore today. <laughs> well, he's going to sleep. <laughs> Tell you what, that stuff will pickle you. <laughs> but, but he's a person who... Mm, we look after we protect us. So we don't have any money to give us some protection from the black magic. Can I have a tiny bit more? And I'll have to see me. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no, no. Just getting to bed pretty early tonight, I think. Frying squirrel. It's gonna be lovely food tonight. Oh, Goanna. Like chicken? Ooh, how long has he been dead for? <laughs> <laughs> You both love your squirrel too. Yeah. And rat. And rat. <laughs> yep. All yours, fellas, I think. Koi mark pusao lao la pusao bo mark koi de. Koi ki lai la tu tui. Na koi ki na ni no. Okay, good morning, everybody. Sabadi Dudukun. Next phase of your course is to put into practice all the theory that you've been taught and learnt at the NTC by conducting render safe procedures and tasks on live unexploded aircraft bombs. Oftentimes, the guys, when they first come across UXO, you know, they're, they're scared. They've seen what these things do to people back in their villages. Your senses are heightened, your muscles tighten up, you can feel your skin going cool. These guys really have to overcome that fear to become senior EOD technicians. Okay. เขาต้องคิดอยู่แล้วว่าถ้ามีความผิดพลาดมาทุกชีวิตพวกเรา the guys checking mate try to identify fuse okay we'll right. right. just keep an eye on that mate you can see that the guys do have concerns when the job's going on and often won't voice it because they don't want to lose face they don't want to be seen to be scared I mean, I had the same concerns myself when I came up against my first bomb. I guess the way I tried to put them at ease is now and again, I'll act the clown a little bit to try and make them a bit comfortable. Leeches everywhere. Buddy, leeches is coming to us. I hate leeches. What do you reckon, mate? What are you more scared of, leeches or that? Yeah, <laughs> oh, female leeches, eh? They don't want to bite her. Yeah, I doubt them to mate. you. Quick, quick, you know? Got a mate. We had a guy when I was in the army didn't wear underpants. And leeches everywhere. And he's... And he's old boy. Up, up inside, mate. 
it started eating and got bigger. I think I've seen how it's better. All right, mate, you stay in your little circle of safety. So much for the big, loud bushman. <laughs> <laughs> So more than two k's. So blow it in place. So I'll see side in the bird. Jack clam. Okay. Basically what he's done is tied it on with bamboo because they haven't brought any sandbags with them. So that's something that I'll have to mention to him is not such a good point. It means that he has to dig around a bomb that's fused and possibly impart some shock on a fuse that's armed and ready to go. The moment where I get the biggest adrenaline rush is after a demolition. You feel everything, and that's a bit of a rush. It's pretty good. I get less stress from my job now than what I would have if I had to sit in an office in Sydney. I love it. If I can keep working here forever, I, yeah, I will. There's certainly enough bombs here in Laos to keep me busy for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'm going to kick your ass, mate. Good, good. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, Vienna. <laughs> I really should have shut up. Bopping you. Bopping you. Waking up to another day of bomb disposal can be a bit daunting, but for the Lao people, uh, it's a respected career choice and it's very important for them to pass. He seems like a good bloke, that Dong Jai, but yeah, he's just Mr. Steady, Mr. Gray. He's not a superstar. He just seems a bit, you know, quiet. Uh, well, we shall see. มีเข็มทรัพย์เก็บเงินของตรงได้ตัดออกเนาะอืมอันคันชีวะแล้วตอนนั้นมันก็ขึ้นกับการตัดสินใจของเจ้าอ่ะจะมันขึ้นกับการ
make your decision. It's not what you want from a, a team leader, really. You've got to have some presence, but you still confidence in and the other people. At the moment, he hasn't shown too much of that. The young fella, Don Zai, he's putting in the best effort that he can, but I think, unfortunately, he's just not quite ready for the responsibility. <clears throat> Dongdo's team's having a bit of trouble evacuating an old man from the village. Sometimes it can be a bit difficult to get the older people to trust you. A lot of the older people that were around in the war often are reluctant to move from their village and they you know, come out with statements like, well, the bombs didn't get me in the war, they're not going to get me now. ก็ไอ้ซื้อไล่ดิคนประเทศเอ่อออสเตรเลียเนาะคอยมาตอออสเตรเลียอ่ะบ่มจ้าวสบายดีบ่ไอ้มีเงินพักก็ไล่ชาม
short way into the second phase of the course now, and I can see that we're probably not going to get all 69 bombs done. There's a heap of factors that are against us. We've got difficult terrain. We've got some difficult local customs that we have to get around. The weather's not helping. I mean, once the wet season sets in, we're probably not going to get to some of these bombs for another six months. But we'll certainly try and get as many done as possible. <laughs> You might only just have to give that a knock and the striker will release. So that one there is a definite no move. Have to be dealt with exactly where it is, which is going to be a problem. Um, plus, if we get a bit more rain, it'll be over, be covered. It smells like somebody already bloody has. He's <laughs> <laughs> got a phase now where you can start to, to form an opinion on these guys, you know. Mm. Get employed as an SEOD or not. No superstars yet, that's for sure. But Pinark, he's, he seems like a pretty switched on dude, mate. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you got him today, haven't you? Yeah, yep, this afternoon, mate. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. I'll find you, I'll find you. Go easy. If it gets away, we've got people down the bottom there and this all bloody squash. I don't know if this is such a bloody good idea. Well, Pinot doesn't seem to get flustered and that's a good sign. Uh, he listens, he's confident, he's got a good rapport with his guys and uh, I think in time he's going to make a really good team leader. ฮาลอยพอนยูทุ่งนาน่ะใกล้ๆบ้านห้องเฮียนซองอ่านเนาะมีเวียกลายอยู่สวรรค์เขตเลยเจ้าเฮียนแล้วน่ะเจ้าไ
The illegal bomb scrap trade is an escalating problem. I guess it's a pretty scary thing. You know, maybe one large bomb body sold could probably provide food for, for two or three months, at least, for the whole family. I guess it's pretty hard to stop kids from doing that when they see all of this money. They want to have it. But we're just fighting a losing battle. I've just had a report that the kids have actually found another bomb, another 500 pound bomb in the middle of the road in between both the schools in that village. So now we've got two bombs to do straight away. Yep, yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Then, mate, I'll do this one, and uh, Pina can do the one out the back of the school. OK. They want to uh, make construction. Telling the girl easy with that uh, pick, mate. Yeah, yeah, I know, but... <laughs> no, I'm not scared. I just don't want to fucking die. <laughs> well, for all we know, that could have a time fuse on it, that bomb, and it might just need a whack to start it ticking again. This bomb still contains about 87 kilos of high explosives in the bomb. There'd be a fair bit of damage, mate. Um, if you look at it, it's right near the bloody fuse box for the village. So there goes all the power for one. And there'd be at least 25 houses in the immediate danger area. There's one school there, another school just here. If we don't get it done now, they'll just build the road over the top of the damn thing. It's about five guys. Just Let's put it here. I tell you what, guys, we're not going to do that. Because if a tail snaps off, the bomb goes straight back in and smash the nose fuse. If that happened, we'd all be gone. We'd be dead. Just vaporised, pink mist. Careful on your head. <laughs> that looks like it's a 904. The fuse has been sheared off, which means the striker that hits the detonator to function the fuse is not there at all. But he should never move anything that's fused at all, never. Because this is in the road between the two schools, that's the only reason that we are moving this one now. Can we please send somebody over to go and see the teachers? <laughs> When we start to pull it, nobody talks, OK? The only person talking will be me and Lynn. Remember, nobody walk backwards, only sideways or forwards, so you don't trip. OK, now together. Yeah. And I'm walking fucking backwards. Oh, yeah. All right, and up again. One, two, three. Well, let's get this one straight out to the demolitions range and, and then let's get straight into Pinar's bomb. The other bomb is just up, up that way, probably about 200 metres. 
Pulled out. All right, Pino, well, this is it, mate, the big one. He's the man with responsibility. So he's the man that has to do the final check to make sure everything is OK. Because if things go bad, it will go on his head and nobody else's. Okay. Just let them know that when they get down near the nose, be very careful. And uh, not cool on by guys. Just go easy, yeah. Go easy. Well, I'm sorry to say, Pino, you've drawn the short straw, mate. This fuse is not sheared off. It's all there and it's all live. So what do you reckon we'll have to do, Pino? I mean, the house is, what, only 30 metres over there, mate? And this one here, only about 20. อันนี้นั่นคาถาว่าสภาพมันยังสมบูรณ์แบบนี้นี่เราตัดลงไปมันจะตีออกไปเลยนะแผ่นเคเกิลฮันเดอร์เปอร์เซ็นต์ไหม
พื่อว่าให้เพื่อนท่านส่งฝนลงมาให้ถูกต้องตามฤดูกาลA young soldier. I remember when the Gulf War happened. I was champing at the bit to to be asked to go. Nowadays, seeing what I've seen and and dealing with trying to clean up the mess after a major war, um, I, you know, I don't think I'd be so keen to jump in anymore. Oh, I'm just a team. ประหยัดคือกันให้เขาเมาเอาไปขึ้นเลยในอุเวนของเรา